fare thee well. And if forever, still forever fare thee well, even though unforgiving, never gainst thee shall my heart rebel. Would that breast were bared before thee, where thy head so oft had lain, while that placid sleep come o'er thee, which thou ne'er canst know again. That was just a taster of the kind of poets we'll be hearing from on the course at Rosebrook. As you've just heard, the text can often be a little difficult to grasp. But, once you've got a grip on the romantics, you can tackle anything. Questions? Now the text I've put up on the board are for next week. I'm sure you'll really enjoy the course, but do bear in mind there will be a lot of reading. So, uh, who's taking the second lecture then? A lecturer who's a lot wiser and a lot older than me. Trevor Grimbob will take your Wednesday double seminar and lecture. Right, the names I'm going to write on the board still haven't picked up last year's double unit exam results, so can you all hang on just to make sure you're not one of them? Holy shit! Fare thee well, as disunited, torn from every nearer tie, seared in heart and lone and blighted. More than this I scare can die. Rufus! Rufus, come down from there! I'm intending to, Claire. Look! Don't be stupid! Just take two steps back! Two steps back and you'll be fine, okay? I don't need these, Claire. I don't need these to see you. need an ambulance where I'm going, Claire, and neither will you. I know that now. I don't understand. I'll see you later. I'll see you later, Claire. Join me.
applications you're not in the bar, you'll be using this corridor. Here you'll see your notice board where you get your information, exam results. Lecture room C, lockers here, we'll have a look at each. All right. It's got a double dose of art history, all right, then, yeah. Bloody hell, it's cold in here. Yeah, Rosebrook's cutting down on his budget by freezing all his students to death. Chip? Oh, God, no. He's such shit. Like Eskimos eat seal blubber to keep themselves warm in snow. I eat chips. There's snow coming here, you know. Yeah, but if it gets any cold, we'll have to shut the place. You have got to be joking. Joking about what exactly? You have a crush on mousy little Claire Radcliffe, the poetry tutor. Why not? She's all right looking. Yeah, for a librarian. Don't turn all freaky on me. I was only looking. Excuse me for being a red-blooded male. Like Rufus Harding. He was a red-blooded male. He proved it too. Everyone saw his red blood. What are you on about now? It was about a year ago, in my brother's year. This Harding bloke was completely obsessed with that Claire woman. Ended up throwing himself off a building just to prove how much he loved her. He's completely fucked her up. She's so fucked up, she can't even talk. Well, uh, I'll have to see if that's true. Hey? I'm majoring in poetry this time. Oh, come on, eat up your monkey chips. Ah, Claire, do sit down. Thanks, brother. Have you seen outside? Beautiful, beautiful day. It's a bit cold. Ah, but from the confines of our university's beautiful walls, the view is a sight to behold. How are you finding your second year here at Rosebrook, Claire? Hopefully you're settled now. Have to admit I'm loving every minute of it. Rosebrook's a really warm university. By warm, I'm of course referring to the attitudes of the staff and students, not the temperature. <laughs> Workload not, um, getting you down? No, no, it's all fine. Mm. I'm delighted, delighted to hear that. Now, <clears throat> on to more, um, sensitive matters. I was asking if you were well, Claire, because... Uh, I know that the events of last year's winter must still prey heavily on your mind. The Harding boy, his uh, unfortunate accident. I'm aware that many people in your situation might blame themselves. I mean, the young boy was infatuated. Obsessed. I don't blame myself, Trevor. Oh, no, 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 no. No, I know you don't. I just wanted to be uh, certain that the incident was um, behind you and that uh, no other students are behaving in an um, inappropriate manner. I'm sure Rufus Harding is not representative of most students, Trevor. I learned a lot about Rufus when I spoke to his parents. He was psychologically unstable, to say the least. Extremely intelligent, perhaps too intelligent for his own good. Well, being very intelligent is not a crime, Claire. No, but Rufus Harding saw too much. Maybe intelligence is the wrong word. Sensitive. He was oversensitive and mistook professional interest in his education for love. Look, Trevor, 
It was great speaking to you, but I'm taking a lecture right now. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Fly, fly away. And never more shall the clouds a chase. Uh, Dardanius is owed to winter. See you soon, Claire. something a little different today. I think it's easy to lose sight of the fact that poetry is essentially a form of music. Each piece has rhythm, a beat, style all of its own. And when studying the great romantics like Byron and Shelley, it's easy to lose sight of the feel of the piece, of its own special rhythm. This has to be one of my favourite works of art from the period. The more you look, the more you get a feel for the period and for the visual inspiration for the great poets. Now in a moment, I'm going to ask you to close your eyes and tell me what images music conjures up for you. We'll then listen to a reading from Blake's Auguries of Innocence and discuss the correlation between visual art, music and poetry in the 18th century. Close your eyes. Imagine you're seeing what the great poets, musicians and artists saw. What inspires you? What makes you dream? Well played. Cheers. You know, there was some aggression out there. I was frightened for my life at one stage. Yeah, well, you know. Uh, you better put some deodorant on. The girls will be here soon. Sorry? Damn, I forgot to tell you. You remember Chrissy and a mate from the other week? Well, I bumped into them in the union shop. Said they're up for some drinks later. Chrissy's all mine, but her mate's all yours. Yeah, well, I'm not interested. <laughs> Excuse me, not interested? Oh, you heard. And if you want to know why, like I expect you do, it's because they're stupid little girls who want to go out and get pissed and tell all their equally immature mates about the public schoolboy dates they had and how they might let them shag them if they buy them lots of drinks and got big pricks. You're the only big prick around here. Only the other day you were telling me you haven't pulled since coming here. Maybe I'm holding out for the right woman. Someone with a bit of class and intelligence. Basically, someone with more than bleached blonde hair, big tits, and it's hard to one day meet Robbie Williams. Oh, like who? That's for me to know. No, you can't go that far. Okay, that mousy little lecturer you took the piss out of the other day, if you must know. And I know you're going to take the piss like you always do, but I think I might love her, okay? So if you are going to have a go, you can just fuck off. Hey, steady on. I think it's cool you've got this crush, all right? But I mean, it's not exactly likely to happen, is it? Why not? She's your lecturer for a start. Yeah, but you haven't seen the way she looks at me. In lectures, right, she looks directly at me. She ignores all the other lads. She only talks to me. 
And the thing is, I know when someone fancies me. And she does. She fancies me. Well, I'm... I'm pleased with you, yeah? Just come out with me tonight. I'll sing right dick on my own with two birds. Now, you should have all read last week's handout from Shelley by now, but I thought it might help to go over it one last time, just in case you chose to answer a question on it. Some might lament that I were cold, as I, when this sweet day is gone, which, which my, my lost, lost heart, heart, too soon grown old, insults with untimely moan. to make them please sit down. They might lament, for I am one whom men love not. Yet regret, unlike Mr. this day, Maitland, the sun shall on its lecture. noble glory set. Far from passion, pain, guilt. Josh, that's enough! I, I thought you'd like it. It was for you, Claire. All for you. Flowers. Oh, this begins with fucking flowers. 
And then they start to tell me how they love me. How they can't do without me. I try to help them. I try to understand why. I can't do this anymore. Is this about Rufus, Claire? He's dead. He's, He's not fucking dead! Sitting there in that lecture theatre staring at me. He's staring all over. Everywhere. Wishing me to be something I'm not. Is it happening again, Claire? Is someone else stalking you? She still loves me. I know she still loves me. She's just annoyed, that's all. It was a bit too much, a bit too public. I mean, when we're alone, she, she comes alive. And I'm not just talking about the sex, although the sex is great. I'm talking about the way she makes me feel, and I know that is such a bullshitty cliche, but unless you've been there, unless you've looked into those eyes, He thinks he knows me. He sends these letters to my flat. They're not pornographic or anything. In fact, they're quite well written. The bastard's got talent. I think she likes them. I mean, if she didn't, that'd be okay, but she understands them. She said they were a little piece of me. She said she'd keep them, every one of them. And if I ever went on a business trip abroad or whatever when we're married, she'd read them to think of me. I think that's nice. She's written little poems about me too. Some funny ones, some, uh, some sexy ones. He's exactly like that Rufus freak, except I think he's worse. He's more intense, and he's more distant in his eyes. Rufus wanted me and couldn't have me, so he chucked himself off that building. I don't know what Josh will do. He says I'm his everything, his universe, his reason for being. Isn't that flattering? As soon as I've graduated, then we'll be together. I want you there at the wedding. Oh, fuck, you can be my best man. I mean, you know I'm not one for weddings, but. When she walks down that aisle, those eyes will look up. Those eyes that understand it, that know who I am. I've just got to wait. No more stupid outbursts, I know that now. I've just got to hold tight. See her occasionally, and when it's dark, stay over some nights. I'll make the sex more fun, you know. The fact that no one else knows. So you had, of course, because you're my best friend. Can I see the letters? Letters? The letters she sent me. Oh, no, 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 Ed. They're really private. Really private. And she went through this really shit time with a stalker last year, so I'm trying to make it easier for us, you know. So, you're both in love with each other? Rufus had that same look. Like a puppy. No. Like a rabid dog. But all the adoration. Why me? I'm just plain Jane from Ipswich. Claire Radcliffe, the girl next door. Comes from a 2.4 family. Bright. Oh yeah, bright, but not pretty never pretty. Of course you are. You're gorgeous, Claire. Well, that's the reason you attract these freaks. You're gorgeous and they want to be with you. Do you really think so? Yes. You're intelligent, beautiful. You're no girl next door. If you were, then Two 20-year-old blokes wouldn't go mad about you. I don't want them to. Listen, Annette. If Josh is on the same path as Rufus, 
then someone's gonna get hurt, okay? And this time they really will send me back. Send you back? Yeah. Back to that crappy teacher training college back home. Oh shit. Is that the time? Look at the mess. Oh, don't worry about that. I can tidy that up. You go home and get a good night's rest. Give me five minutes and I'll give you a lift, okay? you'd like it. It's like in your pictures, isn't it? Only it's real. This time it's real. I don't know how anyone could, could possibly resist you. Oh, they did, Josh. They laughed at me lots. No one wanted to speak to fat, crazy Claire. Josh, on my 16th birthday, boys from school came round to my house and sprayed it from the bottom up in the most horrible, horrible things. That's what school is, Josh. It's not a place for learning. It's a place where the pretty girls, with their nine-inch waists and pretty eyes, sit staring at the boys. And they stare back because... because, well, they're boys. Anyone, anyone who's slightly different, slightly unusual, is ignored. But I refuse to be ignored, Josh. I refuse to be ignored even after they spray fat bitch and crazy Claire and red paint on my parents' door on my 16th birthday. I refuse to be ignored in the hospital. I knew I was special. I could see it in the doctor's eyes. When they asked me questions, I knew what they wanted. When they put me in that white dress, I knew what they were thinking, what they wanted. I knew, you see, that they were the first, the first to realize that I was special. But you are special. I know that. Oh, I know you do. I know you do. 
But I have to tell you something. We can't stay together. I'm sorry. Us! They're talking, Josh. They're talking about us. It's becoming too obvious. We can't hide it. Why does it matter? Who cares? <sighs> Look, my darling, it does matter. The society we live in isn't ever going to understand. They'll always label us freaks. Look, here comes a teacher and pupil. They fuck each other. They fuck each other in the classroom. Do you understand? Look, there's another place. We've been there. We know it. There's music and there's poetry. And there's laughing and sunshine. Here no one understands. No one understands either of us. We'll move. Look, it won't matter. Even if I leave Rosebrook, even if you give up your studies, who else is going to understand? Who else will know the joy, the absolute joy I receive when I look into your eyes and I know you understand? I've prepared it. They'll find us in a couple of days. They'll find us lying side by side. And then they'll realise. Oh, then will they realise. Otherwise it's staying here. In this cold, cold place where no one understands. Where everyone stares. No one understands. First and then I'll follow. It'll be so warm, Josh. So warm. I don't know what to say, Claire. If only I could have prevented it. Saw what that Maitland kid was going to do. He was obviously crazy about you. You're a very special person. I'll miss you. I understand your reasons for wanting to leave, Claire, but I can't say I'm not disappointed. The death of Josh Maitland will, however, prompt us to review some of our policies. I would not wish you to leave Rosebrook with the feeling that our little university was archaic and unsupportive to young female lecturers who are, after all, likely to receive unwanted attention from immature young men. I think it can be safely said that you'll be missed, Claire. Bitch, you stupid fat little mad cow. When are you going to get a boyfriend, Claire, eh? Whoever want you, you stupid crazy fat little cow. Point is, you're never going to get a boyfriend, are you, Claire? You fucking fat bitch, you stupid fat little mad cow. Okay. Yeah. 
Okay, can we settle down? Right, I'm Claire Radcliffe. I'll be your seminar tutor for this module. Now, I know you're all new to this university, Lark, but it's my first day also. So I wouldn't mind beginning by learning about the kinds of authors that you've enjoyed before. My, we're a quiet lot, aren't we? Well, I'm really just after a list of the writers and authors who've inspired you. The poets who've influenced your lives. Challenged your thoughts. Made you dream. <laughs> <laughs> 